Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Unify Network iOS app. I noticed they came out with an update today and I've never done a video on it. And it's come quite a long way since it was first released. I believe the Android app has pretty much the same functions, but I don't use Android. So you'll have to let me know if there's some things missing in the comments. So I have a UDR beside me, which is brand new and it's in a factory default state. We're going to go through the initial wizard and then we're going to see how to create Wi-Fi networks and then networks. And we'll take a look at some of the other features. This isn't going to be an in-depth configuration video. I will be doing a full build when Unify OS 3.1 comes out. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit my website at mactelecomnetworks.com. We have a Discord channel and I do have affiliate links down in the description below. So now let's hop over to my phone and get the initial setup done of this UDR. So we can see that I have a whole bunch of different Unify apps here, but the one we're going to want to pick is the one that is called Unify. This is for our Unify network controller. It currently loaded into my Mac Telecom SE, but we can see that it's brought up a new device, which is the Dream Router, and we're gonna set this up. It's connecting now to the Dream Router. So we've now successfully connected to the UDR, and what we're gonna need to do is put in a name, and I'm just gonna call this Test UDR. It's asking us to set up a Wi-Fi SSID. I'm gonna leave it just as Unify and the password of test1234. Below, you could do the analytics and improvement. I'm not gonna do that. And if you'd need to restore from a backup, you could also do that. We're just gonna press next. It's testing my speed. I'm plugged into a different network that doesn't have the greatest of speed. So this is about right. And now it's doing a firmware update, which it says it will take about 20 seconds. The UDR has now done its firmware updates and that did take about six minutes, not 20 seconds. But this is what the dashboard looks like on the iOS app. At the top, we have our dream router. Then we have a speed test. We have topology, and then we have teleport. If we're going to be using a teleport VPN, it also shows us the number of devices and the clients. If we go down below, it's going to show us our internet connection and what's happening with it. We could see this little slice of green on the right hand side that's showing the connection and it will go all the way across eventually seeing as this has only been powered up for a few minutes. We have our Wi-Fi experience below that, but there are currently no clients on here. We will go into my UDMSC and I'll show you more of that, but on the UDR, we're gonna create a network in a Wi-Fi network. So we need to go down to the settings wheel and then we need to click on our networks. For the network, I'm gonna add a new network. I'm gonna call this network test and the router is gonna be the test UDR, the gateway and IP subnet, I'm gonna click on that. We're not going to have auto scale turned on. I usually never have this turned on and then we're going to create a host address. So we'll put it to 192.168.200.1. And we're going to have a net mask of 255.255.255.0, which is a slash 24. And then we're going to press back. So now we can see that the gateway IP updated. So did the broadcast, the usable IPs, as well as the IP range and the subnet. Now we're going to click on manual and we're going to select a VLAN. So it's VLAN number two. We're going to give it VLAN 200. We're going to leave everything else at the default and press save. So now we have our network created. We could click back and go into our Wi-Fi networks. We could add a new Wi-Fi network. I'll call this test again with a password of test one, two, three, four. And then we're going to select the network type of the test. That's the new network that we just created. It's going to broadcast on all our APs, which is just the UDR and we'll press save. So you can see just from this list that you could pretty much do everything through the iOS app as what you could do on the web page. We could do VPN. We could do the application firewall. We could do our traffic rules, our port forwarding, as well as advanced internet filtering. We look down at our routing and this is going to be our traffic routes and our static routes. We have our profiles, which we could do the ethernet ports. We could do the Wi-Fi. We could do the radius and then the IP groups. The IP groups, I usually do something for RFC 1918 when we're doing firewall rules. We also have this console app. So if we click on that, that's where we could get into the Unify OS settings. So now you can see we have the network application. We have protect, we have access, we have talk, and then we have connect. It's only on Unify OS 2.5.11, so that will need to be updated. But pretty much anything you wanted to do from the web GUI, you could do in the app. Now let's head over to the UDMSE and I'll show you some of the cool features that this app really shows. Now we're over onto my UDMSE and you can see that there's a whole lot more going on. We have 29 devices and we have 23 clients. We have our speed test, we have our topology, which we could take a look at. And this is just showing you a general view of how our devices are connected. You could also zoom into them and we could see between my USW Pro aggregation and my USW Enterprise 24 PoE, 
that I have a link aggregation group. We also have the augmented reality. So the UDM SE, the UDM Pro, and some of their other switches allow the AR functionality. And I will show a video on how that works after. And we also have the teleport. We'd also now see under the internet that this Rogers is all green except a couple yellow spots which is showing a bit of latency. We could see the Wi-Fi experience and then we could see all of the clients. If we click on this thing that looks like an access point, we could see all of the unified devices. And if I click on my switch, we can now see up top what is connected to what port. So I have a camera on this port, on port two, I have an access point, port three and port six, I have a G3 flex. So that's a really nice touch and I believe you could click on them and it will bring you to the device so that you could look at their wired experience or you could power cycle it if you'd want. You'd also see all the statistics from the switch or whatever you're going into, just like we would do in the web GUI. Now in the top right hand corner, this is gonna be our system log. So if we click on that, you could see that I adopted an access point. We could see multiple devices were offline. We'd see high latency, and then we could go to security detection. So this would be your IDS or your IPS showing up in the system log. And we could also see our updates admin activity, clients, and our AP. One of the newer features in the iOS app is this up top. We could see that these nine little dots, if we click on it, we're able to either go into Unify Access, Unify Talk, or Unify Connect, or whatever application is running on our firewall. Now, sometimes it doesn't scale quite right when we go into Unify Talk, but it does work pretty well. Now, this is a video of the augmented reality, which I took a little while ago. What we would have to do, we'd have to click the AR functionality and then scan this little icon on the screen. This will bring up the ports right in front of us and what's connected. You'd see that I have the US Enterprise on port two, and then we have my desktop here. So let me play this video. So you could see that it's showing us all of our devices and the ports, which is really cool. And I'm glad they added this feature. Now, if you do want to see more about the augmented reality, I do have a full video and I'll put that in the description below, but that's going to be it for this iOS walkthrough. And I think it's really cool. Now, do I use this app a whole lot? Not really, maybe during the initial setup and that's it. I prefer to do all my configuration from my computer. Let me know down in the comments below if you use the iOS app to do full configuration or not. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.